What is going on guys? It's Brad with Pondscapes of Charlotte and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the leak detection process, how we go about it with our exploratory cleanouts and what we are going to ask you to do if we know that your pond is leaking before we come out there for an exploratory cleanout. So stay tuned for that and also if you aren't having us out for exploratory cleanout but do have a water feature that leaks um, there's going to be some tips and hints in the video um, that hopefully help you solve your problem. Um, but just like a pond list, when we're trying to find the leak, the first thing that we try and do is separate it into different parts and start eliminating which parts of the water feature are leaking or are not leaking. So we're going to separate the feature into three main parts. The first part is the pond itself. The second part is the plumbing. And the third part is the stream. So these are the three areas or segments of the pond that we want to isolate and test. Um, so we can know where to look for the leak. The reason we are getting you to do a test before we come out there for, to for an exploratory clean out is when we go out there, if we can cancel out a certain section where we know is not leaking, it's going to give us more time in the other two sections to spend time looking for problems and possibly fixing problems. So. That's why we ask you to do this basic test before. But anyways, the idea of the test is you got your pump in here most of the time. Sometimes you have the pump in the bottom of the pond. Most of the time it's in a skimmer. And normally the cord comes out somewhere over here and then goes and plugs into a box. What we're going to ask you to do before the clean out is we're going to ask you to unplug the pump, okay? Once you do that, all this water that's in motion is going to come down your stream and into your pond, and it's actually going to raise your pond level just a slight bit um, when all this water falls into to the water feature. But once you unplug it, you're going to wait for all this water to drain. And then you're going to take, you're going to fill it, up, fill it up with a garden hose as well, if it's low in water. So say you unplug it, all the water drains out, and the water level is, is low. It's still like right there. Then what we're going to need you to do is, is take a garden hose and just fill up the pond to its normal operating height. Um, now you might ask, what is this normal operating height? That's something you might already know, or if you don't know, normally it's two inches below the opening of the face plate on the skimmer. So the, the opening is like a box and the water level, most of the time on skimmers is two inches below the top of that opening. So, um, sometimes they have like a little mark on there where you can see. Um, so once you unplug the pump, let the water drain from the stream, you're going to fill up the pond to its normal operating height. And then you're going to shut off the hose <clears throat> and you're going to wait 24 hours overnight with no rain. Okay, so once you have the pump unplugged, the pond filled up to the normal operating height, you want to take a photo of preferably the skimmer, but if it's too hard to take a photo of where the water level is on the skimmer, you can take it um, in a different spot. But whatever the spot is, it's got to be consistent and um, noticeable if the water level is dropping overnight. 
So take a picture. If you send it to us, that's even better. And then you're going to wait 24 hours with no rain and come back out and take a picture of the same spot and compare the two photos. If the pond level has stayed the same, that means we can rule out the pond as itself being a leak. Um, that's, that's a good sign. If the water level has gone down in 24 hours, say it's gone down two inches. What we're gonna wanna do, take a photo, send it to us, wait another 24 hours and see if the water level has stayed the same or has gone down even more. Let's say it's gone down even more, another two inches. You're gonna take a photo, send it to us, same process, and wait 24 hours with no rain. If it rains, then you gotta wait another 24 hours because it's adding water to the system and it's gonna mess up the results. Um, eventually, you're gonna come out and this water level is gonna be the same as it was the day before, okay? So, if it's the same as it was the day before, we know to look along this water level, all along the sides of the pond by the skimmer faceplate, we're gonna be looking in that area for signs of problems. It could be um, a hole in the liner, it could be rusted out skimmer bolts, which uh, happens quite often on these face plates. Um, but this process of the pond level going down, waiting 24 hours, can drag out and can take a long time. Um, so it's important to know that, you know, uh, if you leak, say you have a hole in the liner right here, close to the bottom, it's going to take a while for the water to drain all the way down there. Um, Say you have two leaks, okay? It's gonna be going down faster and then it's gonna to get to this one. It's still gonna start going down or keep going down because of this hole, but it might go slower, you know? Um, the thing to also keep in mind is, heck, you may have a, a hole in the pond and you might have um, water coming out the side of your stream as well, you know? There might be multiple issues. The big thing for us to know on exploratory cleanup before we come out there is, is this pond leaking or is it holding water, okay? Um, and if it is leaking, then we need to um, try and get it down to a level where it's steady, consistent. That way we can search around that area um, and possibly find a leak and fix it. So this is, the majority, 99% of the people that have a pond that's leaking, um, calls for an exploratory cleanout. We're gonna ask you to run this first simple test of filling the pond up, unplugging the pump, and waiting to see if the, the pond itself is holding water. Um, that's as, as much of the testing we're gonna ask you to do 99% um, of the time before the exploratory cleanout. Now, when we come out for the exploratory cleanout, say the pond didn't go down at all and we know it's holding water. Well, that's great news. That's gonna give our guys more time to inspect the stream and to inspect the plumbing. Most of the time, leaks are in the stream. And most of the time, it's because of overgrown plants. Um, a lot of times on this weird, Weir stone, there's, there's plants that start growing. And if you're not taking those out or getting clean outs uh, or staying on top of it, um, you know, after a couple of years, it's gonna start damming up the stream. And <clears throat> what could happen is this water that used to flow down like this could start getting dammed up by these uh, plants and it could actually start leaking out the back of your biofoam. The same thing could happen in the stream as well.
If you have a ton of overgrown plants in your stream, it could be damming up the water and water could be escaping um, out the side of the liner where, where it once been. So um, I would check right there. It'd be one of the, uh, the most common spots is outside of the back of the biofalls if you got a lot of plants there. Also look for leaves. A lot of times during the fall, if a ton of leaves get in the stream, it start to dam it up as well. Um, with the plumbing, a lot of this is buried. So basically we're looking for wet spots to start. If we see a very wet spot when the water feature is running, um, forming right here, it's always wet. We might try and track this water back, dig up a little bit and see if we can um, visually see it coming out of the pipe. And then at that time, we'll assess the situation and see if we can just fix this portion of the pipe or if we have to replace the entire plumbing. Um, but that's something we won't know until we have our professionals out there to take a look and assess the situation. Um, so with the exploratory cleanouts, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. It can be very hard to find it. The, the tests that you uh, help us run beforehand is going to give us um, a lot of help in eliminating certain parts of um, the feature on what is good and what is not good. Some of the situations that may happen during the exploratory clean out, um, it could be something as simple as we had to remove some plants or we had to move some rocks and lift some liner and we fixed the leak. Um, that happens, but it doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes we come out to a pond and it's in really rough shape. They have problems with their skimmer bolts. They have rubber boots all along their plumbing and everything's overgrown and maybe it wasn't built correctly. And at that point, um, you know, like when we're out there, our professionals are gonna to talk to you, show you all the, uh, the problems or issues that are going on with your pond and give a recommendation on what they think the best thing to do is next. Um, you know, it could be a bunch of different situations and scenarios. It's, it's different a lot of the time. A lot of the time, these face plate seals, um, if they weren't done correctly, they can leak over time. Um, and that's something that, that this test as well will help us find out. A lot of the times, if this water in the pond goes down and it stops, like right there at the bottom of the skimmer faceplate. It doesn't tell you 100%, but it can uh, give you a good idea that the water is stopping at the bottom of the faceplate. It could be a problem with the seal at the faceplate. And that's all valuable information to know before heading out for the exploratory clean out. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to give us a call. Um, I hope this video helped you at least understand the first part of the test, what we're asking you to do before the exploratory cleaning. Um, and also for those of you not getting exploratory cleaning, but also have a problem with the pond leaking, I hope maybe one of these areas of concern you go take a second look at, like the back of the biofalls, plants, the skimmer faceplate, and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to find it. So. Thanks for uh, tuning into the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.